two types of is a new series where I will go in detail of two things from the opposite sides. On this one, we got two types of knights and team hunts. For simplicity, I will refer to them as the offensive and defensive types. And no, I'm not talking about those that use full attack or defense settings or a shielding versus a two-handed. It is a bit more complex than it sounds. And at the end of the video, you might identify which type you or your knight fit or perhaps even discover which style you should adopt. For starters, the role of the knight in team hunts, very generalized, is to be the tank and mid back for monsters. The goal is to have the aggro from the monsters and keep them in place for the rest of the party to damage them, and then carry the loot from the hunts. That's a very simplistic way to describe it, but even though the knight might be the lowest damage output in most hunts, that doesn't mean that he doesn't impact the total damage the most, and that's where we start to branch out into the types of knights. An offensive EK will look for ways to do the most damage he can by using techniques or playstyles. For example, a simple demonstration of the two types is one that will go full Tiro Tempo and one that goes full Tamu. One does more damage at the cost of taking more and the other takes less damage at the cost of doing less. But that's also not what this video is about, that's just level 1. And even that example has more deepness if you think about it further. The full Utido EK might be pushing his character to the limits, but also at the cost of more heals from the druid and sorcerer. And a full Utamu might be at a spawn that's high risk for himself, but gives more rewards than easier spawns, and by playing defensively, his team usually will focus on doing more damage. But the real highlight of this video doesn't come from the actual damage output because there is an even more important factor when it comes to doing better in team hunts, and that is the speed. Starting with the offensive knight, this is what it will look like. By leaving the pool before the monsters die, leaving them to be finished on the way to the next pool, it starts to add important seconds than in a game as repetitive like Tibia, efficiency is what improves the XP numbers the most, so once the EK starts to set up a faster pace in the hunt by doing this, he is able to start setting up the next pool while the paladin and sorcerer are clearing the remaining monsters from the previous one. And once to get to the next pool, it will most likely be set up so they can do more burst damage and repeat. This is a simple yet very important factor in team hunts. However, the cost for doing it will usually be high, starting by increasing the risk for everyone involved. Not only the EK needs to be able to keep himself alive while setting up during the time the ED gets to him, but also everyone needs to deal with monsters on top of them, that even though they should be low enough to die in a few turns, that still adds a constant damage intake that otherwise wouldn't be there. Which is why it's important to also be aware of the type of players in the party. If the druid can't keep up with the pace, then the EK can die by himself, or if the sorcerer and paladin are too slow at clearing the remaining monster, then that is a damage loss for the next one. So if everyone is not in the same pace, then deaths start to happen and Tibia is particularly good at punishing it. Additionally, this will also eat more supplies for everyone, hence increasing the waste. But if done properly and the speed does go up, that also means the monsters are dying quicker, and that's extra loot as well. Now, moving to the defensive type EK, it will be something like making sure that most creatures on the way to the pool are aggro to him, and then to stay until either the pool dies or they are one turn away from doing so. The benefits to this is a safer and easier home for everyone, especially good when somebody from the party is not a good player or lags and disconnects off them. As someone that played with the same ED for the majority of my time with Fanda Korea, and both of us being Venezuelans, we both will run into disconnects often, and despite that, we hardly ever die to them. As long it didn't kick both of us, then things were control enough that we could survive, and later on we added a sorcerer that honestly wasn't a good player, and also had high ping, and even him wouldn't die much when hunting with me. Because doing a slower pace hunt allows you to take in more information and to have more control, like the amount of monsters before you set up or when the players are lagging behind and it even gives time to be prevented before things go bad. As someone that played like this for a long time, I know we were making less experience than other teams hunting the same spawns. However, I also had the least amount of deaths on my team compared to multiple other parties combined. And on a game like Tibia, where deaths are so punishing, it pays off in the long run, especially if the team prefers this style. Another benefit to hunting like this back then was making sure to grab most of the loot. This is no longer an issue nowadays because you can loot entire stacks of bodies with one click and now even have indicators for bodies unlooted but back then that wasn't a thing, and also the team hunt analyzer didn't exist, so counting and splitting the loot was less reliable when everybody had some of it, because of that I will find it easier if I had most of the loot. 
However, there were also moments where I would stay behind for just one monster, when in reality I wasn't needed and it didn't cause any risk to my teammates because it'd be very unlikely to die to one monster. Instead, it would die much quicker because the shooters would switch from AoE attacks to SDs. And then if I was the last to move, I will often run into players, or they will run ahead and get the aggro from the monsters instead, hence becoming more of an issue than a solution. But in spawns like Soul War, where the meta went back to hunting 8 monsters at a time and usually having extras on the shooters will make the hunts much harder, this playstyle was far more effective because I was used to making sure to rest the monsters on the way to the pools and these spawns originally truly showcased the importance of a good EK setting the proper pace of the hunts. But not only the hunts are repetitive, they are also very long. By being constantly on a fast pace, people are more likely to get tired and it's pretty common to have high peaks but lower average because mistakes are bound to be made. But the same argument can be used against it. If the pace of the hunt is too slow and long, then people are more likely to get bored. So it is very important to find a balance. Be aware of the two types, find the situation or spawns where you can afford to be more offensive. Always seek to make improvements, but also be aware of your team's shortcomings and weaknesses. If you're doing that, then it is easier to make the hunts better for everyone. When hunting with randoms, try to go for more safer hunts, first learn the skills of the players you are with and then adapt accordingly. And when hunting a new spawn, also go for the safer and more defensive approach. It takes some time to get used to spawns and to recognize which pools are the hardest and the easiest. But once you are familiar with a spawn, then you are more likely to be capable of pushing its limits and improving it. That's all I got for this breakdown of the two types of knights. Feel free to share in the comments which type your EK is, or perhaps share some insight on things I might have missed on this topic, especially from the perspective of other vocations. I'm curious on how you feel about it. And if you like the content, consider subscribing or even donating Tia coins to Goody Donation. Thank you for watching, and a special thanks to Tuna Hero, Thor the Slasher, and Nightstar for their support on the channel.